We burn so much coal in this country for electricity that every year that process generates, listen to this number, 130 million tons of waste. Most of it is coal ash, and it contains some nasty stuff. Environmental scientists tell us that concentrations of mercury, arsenic, lead, and other toxic metals are considerably higher in coal ash than in ordinary soil. When coal ash is disposed of in dry, lined impoundments, it's said to be safe. But as we first reported last October, it's often dumped into wet ponds. There are over 500 of them across the country, and in those cases, the ash can pose health risks to nearby communities. The story will continue in a moment. We get about 48 percent, nearly half of the electricity in this country from coal. Jim Rower is one of the top lobbyists for the power industry. Coal is going to be around for a long time. And we really can't get rid of coal. We and shouldn't it, get rid of coal. We've well, got... Well, should or shouldn't, we can't. And coal makes waste. Would you say that the industry has done a good job of disposing of the coal ash waste? We can do better. Does that mean no? Well, we had a Kingston spill. That's Kingston, Tennessee, where in December 2008, a giant retention pool of coal ash buckled under the weight of five decades of waste. All the power lines have been knocked out. A billion gallons of muck shot into the Emory River like a black tsunami. One person in the house, but he's alive. He's Engulfing homes, uprooting trees. Everything's gone. And throwing fish out of the water. No, don't eat the fish, please. Residents woke up to an apocalyptic moonscape of ash bergs everywhere. This stuff is just sitting there steaming. The spill was a hundred times larger than the Exxon Valdez, and it was all coal ash. You'd never heard of coal ash before Kingston? Never. Never? Never. Wasn't a problem. Well, it was a problem, we just didn't know. The problem is, where do you put all that stuff? Here, the Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA, dumped up to 1,000 tons of coal ash every day into a wet pond near the plant, slowly amassing a waste cake 60 feet high. Some of the ingredients, according to the EPA, arsenic, lead, mercury, selenium, cadmium, and other toxic metals. You know, some people say that this is a poisoned meadow. I guess that's, you know, one way to describe it. It just doesn't belong here. It needs to come out. Leo Franson DC is an environmental Mr. Fix-It. He was sent by the EPA to clean up this mess. And in the wrong circumstances, coal ash is dangerous. Breathing it, that's dangerous. The summer heat can bake the ash into a fine talc-like powder that can wreak havoc on your lungs. And this is all coal ash right yes, along here. So while the government has never formally labeled coal ash a hazardous waste, it's being treated as such here. Is that all coal ash? Yeah. As we left the site, we were scrubbed clean, as was our car. Oh my goodness, look at this. Does this every car that goes every through the site goes, goes through, through this? Every car that goes through the site goes through this. Gary Topmiller lives right on the river. He had a front row seat when the spill covered his dock. Now, what the doctors did tell me was, get out of there. And I said, I don't have any place to go. So, so how do you live? You don't go out on the water. No, we don't go out of the house. From the house, he sees scientists collecting samples to analyze just how bad the water is. The river looks clear, but Topmiller says that's deceptive. OK, this came, comes out of right here. Right, it comes right And, and I should shake it? Turn it upside down and start shaking it. And this is what the river looks like once it once that stuff gets suspended oh in it. And how they're going to get that all out of the river, I don't have an idea. Most of his neighbors have packed up and left. Go down the river and you pass home after home that are deserted. The hubbub of children replaced by the hum of heavy machinery. Those left behind say the noise is one thing. What really infuriates them is executives from the power plant telling them that coal ash is as safe as dirt. We have broken the trust of And Array oversees environmental policy at the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is responsible for the spill. I asked her how toxic she thinks coal ash is. I'd say that the constituents, the things that are in the coal ash, are the same things that are naturally occurring in soil and rock. So is it like 
dirt? Would you say that? Would you say that sentence? That stuff is like dirt? Uh, it, that's, that ash material is higher than dirt in two areas, and that is arsenic and thallium. I then asked about company reports that repeatedly questioned the stability of the ash ponds. Should the TVA have seen this coming? You, you know, were warned repeatedly. Leslie, there were red flags that have been noticed all through the years. And we recognize that those red flags should have been addressed, but yes, we miss them, and we don't ever want to miss them again. The spilled ash is now being loaded onto trains and sent off to a dry landfill in Alabama. Right now, coal ash disposal is regulated by the states, some of which have strict rules, some hardly any at all. EPA can be a force for good. Lisa Jackson heads the EPA. She's been reviewing whether the federal government should get involved by labeling coal ash a hazardous waste, which would mean much tighter regulations and oversight. Why wouldn't you right now, this minute on 60 Minutes, declare that coal ash is a hazardous waste? EPA, in making a regulatory determination, has to look at a number of factors, including the to toxicity of the material and how it's currently managed. But that's done according to law. The industry opposes calling coal ash hazardous waste. They're pushing for another solution, recycling. That hill over there might be 40 feet of coal ash. Ted Yoakum, a lawyer in Virginia, says recycling can breed its own disaster. He says that in 2002, the state's power company, Dominion, got rid of some of its excess coal ash by giving it to this golf course in Chesapeake. Wow, how many tons of coal ash, do you know, did they use to build this golf course? We know that they put at least 1.5 million tons. Million tons. Yes. For conditional use permit to construct and operate a golf course. In this city council meeting, a consultant hired by the company that built the golf course assured the mayor that coal ash was safe for reuse. It, in every aspect, is, it's, it's the same as dirt, as it's been explained to me. I'm not aware of any ne negative aspects of it at all. The mayor then turned to a Dominion executive. Is there any environmental concerns we should be aware of? No, sir. We at uh, Dominion Power uh, are fully in compliance with all the federal and state regulations. Two years later, this internal company study about handling the ash for the golf course recommended that workers use impervious gloves and particulate filtering respirators due to potential health Problems risks. With children, birth Robin defects. Pierce and her neighbor, Stacy okay Mormon, live across the street that. from the golf course. It was said that they were told they should wear respirators and body suits. Nobody came up and down either one of these two streets and handed out wardrobe for us. But our, our children out were out there playing in the yard, breathing the stuff. How does that happen? Also, Dominion's internal risk assessment warned of the dangers of coal ash leaching into the water supply. To prevent that, the contractor who built the golf course was supposed to build a two-foot barrier under the coal ash and one 18 inches on top. The contractor's engineer certified this was done. But Attorney Yoakum, who represents townspeople who are suing Dominion, suspects it wasn't. As you can see right here, um, it's, uh, it's right at the surface. Oh my insects, God. That, that's it, coal ash? Of in, course it is. Insects yeah. have pulled it up. You can see how it flies away. The city dug into the golf course in 2008, did a test, and found elevated levels of toxic metals in the water. With all the knowledge that Dominion had about the coal ash and the lead and the arsenic and beryllium and all the, all the poison, to put it in this environment um, is it, just an outrage. That water test was just for the golf course. Dominion told us, and the EPA confirms, that EPA testing shows no harm to residential wells nearby. I invite any, anybody from the companies who have put it over there to come to my house and have dinner, and I will use that tap water. Mm -hmm. Stacy and her neighbors think it's too risky to drink the water. So after Dominion refused to provide them with <laughs> bottled water, they began trudging to a local church where the city pipes in guaranteed clean water. Is that how, how you get your drinking water? Yes. Yeah. We use to brush our teeth and take baths. 
Dominion declined to give us an interview, but most power companies rely on recycling because it cuts the 130 million tons of coal waste every year in half. The industry calls recycling beneficial use. Ah, uh, don't even, beneficial for who? The only people it was beneficial for were for those utility companies that had to get that stuff off their hands because they were already in violation with stockpiling too much. That is what beneficial use meant. But the EPA and the Bush administration endorsed beneficial use, and now coal ash is recycled in dozens of ways, as cement substitute, for instance. It's also placed under roads and in deserted mines, and it's added to products from carpets to bowling balls to bathroom sinks. While the industry says the uses have been studied, I asked Lisa Jackson whether the EPA knows if some of the recycled products are safe. Schoolroom carpeting. I don't know. I have no data that says that's safe at this point. Kitchen counters. The same. 50,000 tons of coal ash byproducts um, have been used in agriculture. Now, what's being done through EPA to look at the use of coal ash in agricultural products? Anything? Are you, is there a study? Is there? I, I'm not sure that there's any study out there right now. How, how did we get to a place where coal ash is in products without anybody knowing? We're, we're here now because coal ash at this time isn't regulated material right. by the federal government. Right. If the EPA declares coal ash a hazardous waste, lobbyist Jim Rower says beneficial use would die and the cost of disposal would skyrocket. Well. We look at that and we're looking at something on the order of 12 to 13 billion. Billion? Billion. And who'd pay for that? We know, the customers. Environmental of protection doesn't come cheap. The he says the current state-by-state -state regulatory system may not be perfect, but it works. Could you say right now that the disposal in all the coal ash plants today are uh, safe? and that they're all doing a proper job? What I can guarantee is that they're going to do their best to manage coal ash safely so that you don't have a release like Kingston. Are all these plants safe? That's what the state regulations are all about, to ensure the safe management of coal ash. But, but <laughs> well, you're not saying they are safe. You're playing word games with me. You're not saying they are safe. You want me to guarantee that yeah, I do. They're I think everybody's safe. I want, yes, well, I do. I, what I can say is the state regulations and the utility management practices are put in place to ensure with a goal of safe management of coal ash. I don't think many people really trust the utility industry. I'm sorry to tell you. You're not the first one to tell me that. The EPA has yet to say how it intends to regulate coal ash, but in June, the agency formally announced proposals for two regulatory options. A tough one, treating coal ash essentially as hazardous waste, and a less stringent one, treating it more like home garbage. The EPA is currently holding public hearings on both these options.